Please excuse my dusty do. No, you are not watching an episode of 60 Minute Makeover or Homes Under the Hammer. I have been doing some DIY. Oh my God, I'm so out of breath. I just went up the stairs before. <laughs> Before I said that, I'm so unfit. Anyway, what I was gonna say before I died is that I don't do DIY because I can't do DIY. I would rather just pay someone else to do it for me. What I want to do, it's just not worth paying someone to do it. So with the help of my husband, we're gonna do it ourselves. So I've decided to give my office a bit of a makeover. And as part of said makeover, I'm gonna get new bookshelves and put them in my office. So what I thought it would be cool to do is to document this process build my bookshelves and then give you a bit of a physical bookshelf tour as I do it. So we live in a three bedroom house and currently I have one bookshelf that is in my dressing room which is in what we call the second bedroom and my office is in the smallest bedroom because I work from home. And what I want to do is have my bookshelves in here, make it look a little bit prettier, a little bit more put together so that I can do a bit more filming in here, create a bit more of a nicer space for my books and for me to work in and for me to film in. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the room now as it is, this is the before. And what I've been doing today is just filling in one hole that was in the wall. And the people that lived in the house before us, they had three kids. And in this room, they had stickers on the wall for like Disney characters. Why people would stick stickers onto the wall, I do not know. Clearly some people lack brain cells because it was a ball ache getting it off of the wall. And it's left like indents and marks and I've tried to fill it and sand it down as best as I can. Whether it's gonna get rid of them completely I don't know because as I've already said DIY is not my forte but I'll do the best with what I've got so let me show you what the crack -a -lack is okay so this is as you come in this is obviously my work desk um it's a mess it's also very dusty because I forgot to cover it as I was filling in the walls <laughs> I told you, I'm not very good at this. So the idea, what I want to do is have a tall bookcase here and then another one like here. And then I'm going to put some prints up on the wall here. Now the bookcases that I've bought, they are black and we're going to paint this room uh, like an off-white colour. So hopefully that will brighten it up. So one bookshelf is going to be here, a nice tall one. And then the other one will be here. And then these are all like the marks that I've been filling in on the walls. <laughs> and then that was the really big hole. Hello, holy, holy, holy. <laughs> and then I need Sam to fix that because it's come down and I'm going to get a new lampshade. But yes, those are my plans for this room. I've done everything that I wanted to do today, which was fill in that one hole and then try and fill in some of the marks on the wall. So that is the before. Tomorrow, me and my husband are going to make a start on cleaning the walls and doing some painting. <laughs> push the button? No. No wonder it's not working. The button? <laughs> there ain't a f button!
so we've done it we've put the furniture together and we're still together we're still married there's no impending divorce i say that's a success the best way to test your relationship or marriage is to put flat pack furniture together if you can get through that you can get through anything um i must say though that was a lot easier than flat pack furniture that we've done in the past for example our furniture downstairs in the living room <laughs> I still have PTSD about that six years on. The furniture downstairs on my days, that that was that was so painful to put together and that was from Wayfair. Isn't that a bit of a dodgy website? <laughs> I don't know, I just get weird vibes from it. The furniture is good, it's still standing, but yeah, I don't know, I don't know what it is about it. This furniture, both of the shelves were from Argos and I think they are by Habitat. Now I'm not gonna lie, this one is, <laughs> it's a lot smaller than what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like more so up here, but I have no one to blame but myself for that because did I measure? Did I take note of the measurements online and then measure up against the wall? Absolutely not. So I have no one to blame but myself because I <laughs> me measure? I take DIY seriously. I don't need to rely on a measure, okay? I just I just use my old noggin. So yeah, that is why uh, it's looking a little bit smaller than I thought it would be. But it's still nice, you know, it's still a decent height. I think I would rather it be too small than too big. So what I wanna do now is get some little nice trinket bits to go along the top. I'm thinking a lamp because I've got a switch there. And then up here, I've got um, two nails, whatever they're called. <laughs> And screws, nails, I don't know. So I'm gonna put two prints up there. I have already ordered two off of Etsy. And then obviously this is the main bookshelf. Some of these are very gappy. <laughs> like they really are quite big, um, but that's fine, that's fine. Some of my hardbacks are quite tall and they don't fit into my current bookshelf. So that's not a problemo. And then what I'm thinking of doing is maybe getting some like little pictures to go here. I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna have to see what it's like. And then we've moved the desk here. Here. this is where obviously I'll work and it's trashed at the moment I need to clear all of that away and then maybe put something on this wall I'm not quite sure yet and then the only other thing that I want to do is maybe get like a nice tall like plan in the corner because I don't open this door too often like the stuff that is in here <laughs> horrified so yeah it's i'm pleased with how it's looking so far so tomorrow i am going to get all of my books from my old bookshelf bring them in and then sit and go through all of the books that i physically own and then put them in their new home but i'm not going to do that now because it's quite late as you can see it's dark outside it's also raining horribly but yeah, that's what I'll do tomorrow or the day after is take you through the official, the new and improved bookshelf tour. I'm going to start off with this one and then move on to the taller bookshelf. I think I'm going to turn it around as well. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to try anyway. I was thinking about doing rainbow shelves, but I don't know if it's just a bit gimmicky, a bit... No offence if you have rainbow bookshelves. <laughs> Please don't hate me. I just don't know if they're right for me. And also, I don't know if I have enough books of all the different colours of the rainbow. And I'm just worried that I'll look stupid since when have i cared about looking stupid never never so i think i'm gonna organize them maybe by author genre <laughs> i'm gonna mood shelf yes i'm gonna shelf my books based on mood and that's what i'm feeling today i'm thinking genre author <laughs> go with the flow so starting with this bad boy i wanted a shelf for my binding and keeping 13 collection because i have a lot of those so i have the published covers i also have the special edition covers and then i also have the indie covers because i'm a psychopath and i wanted to own all of the covers so let's put these on first right, i've just found binding 13 these are quite tall oh yeah there we go so let's put binding here keeping here <laughs> Doesn't it look pretty? Saving six, steaming six. 
And then if we go in with the special, no, yeah, the special edition covers. So binding 13, keeping 13, there's saving six, steaming six, there. Binding 13 and keeping 13. Don't have the published books yet for saving and redeeming six because I didn't really like those books. So I hesitated to buy them and the publisher sent the published books to me. But that is gonna look a bit odd, isn't it? So now I have an excuse to buy those books. Okay, and then for the top shelf, I am thinking if the books aren't too tall, Mariana's a parter. So, Wall of Winnie pegs. Oh yes, it fits. Let's get Wall of Winnie in there. Get all roads lead here. Luna and the lie. I own every single indie copy, by the way. Because again, I'm a psychopath. Colty is. Oh no, that one's taller. We have to go by height. I've got the best thing and from look off with love here. Oh, from look off is taller than those. Oh! Ugh. <laughs> Wait for it. This is one of my favourites. There we go. Oh, under lock. Gotta get this bad boy in. Oh, she's a tall girl. Oh, don't fall. Let's put this one up here. Oh my god, this is so pretty. Oh, I've got Lingus, Hands Down, Gracie and the Grump. Can I even get all of these on there? Okay, 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 we're getting somewhere. Not. Rhythm, Chord and Malakin. Oh, that one's a little bit taller. We should put a little bit taller. Dear Aaron. Dear Aaron's a little bit taller. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh -huh. Why she needs to write some more books so that I can fill up my shelf. Bottom shelf. What are we feeling? I'm thinking maybe Penelope Douglas. So I'm gonna get the Devil's Night series on the bottom shelf first. <laughs> Go, so that one fits in there all nicely. Hope you can, can you see that? <laughs> That's on out. Then I've got the Fall Away series. Oh, I don't even like this series. So we have Bully first, then it's Until You. Oh, by the way, the reason that those covers are different is because this is the US cover that I loved. I bought this in New York and then I think this is the generic normal covers for the rest of the series because I didn't really like the rest of the series. And then it's Rival, and then it's Falling Away, and then it's the other one, what's it called? After Flame? Where the hell is that? Oh, I really made it. Ah, no, the next flame. Okay, so I'm gonna put Credence next. Uh, Tristix Venom. Oh, yeah, that one fits, lovely. Punt 57, Birthday Galley Galley, Misconduct, Souls Boys, and I think I think that might be it for Penelope Douglas books. I don't think there's any others. But at least now for each of these authors, I have a little bit of room for when they release more books because I will buy them, of course. And I think that looks pretty cute, don't you? I might be able to get a little trinket just to go on each shelf so it doesn't look quite so <laughs> disjointed. But for now, oh my God, I'm getting cramp. For now, let's move on to the big boy. I need a big boy. <laughs> Give me a big boy. Oh. Oh, God, it does sound stretching. <laughs> it's coffee season. Okay, I've turned the shelf around so that the books are now facing this way. I mean, this could all completely change and I could hate it. I could hate the arrangement with passion, but we're just, we're gonna roll with this for now. If you've got any suggestions, holler at your girl. Okay, so I am thinking up here, we put fantasy Sarah Jane Moss. <laughs> I feel so old, even though I'm not. Okay, is this gonna go in here? Oh, this does not feel sturdy. <laughs> we got a guitar. Why don't, I might put that there, maybe. <laughs> Let's just try it. Oh my God, where did all the good books go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can I get that in there? Can I get, I don't even like this book. Do you know what, I'll probably sell that at some point, but just stick that in there like that. Yeah, yeah, is that all right, is that all right? Okay, and then what if I put that? I don't know. I don't really want Sarah J Mass taking up two shelves. I'm honestly not really bothered if you can't see some books. I'm just not that pressed. There we go, there we go. That'll do, donkey, that'll do. One day I would love a big, a bigger room with an entire wall full of bookshelves. You know, what you see the old uh, big dogs having on YouTube, on TikTok. But for now, I will settle for this. I'm thinking of putting the these two, Belladonna and Fox Club, the US covers, stunning. Stunning books, stunning covers. Aha, uh -huh, they belong on my shelves. Okay, can I get this? Oh yes. Okay, what other fantasy books have we got? I've got this series, the, Flum the From Blood and Ash series. 
Ah! So I wanted to put this along here. This is the third book, isn't it? The Crown of Gilded Bones. I don't know why I'm asking you. It's not like you can tell me. Pretty sure there's a white book that goes in there. And I don't know where it is. One Dark Window and Two Twisted Crowns on that shelf. These are my boobies. My very, very precious boobies. <laughs> the Shepherd King. By the way, that's not me farting if you can hear that. It's my floorboards. <laughs> right, okay, I'm just gonna move on. I find that book and I know it's here somewhere. <gasps> there it is. I got it. I got it. That's here. The Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. This is the second one. Okay, I'm gonna put the Hoops Trilogy by Kennedy Ryan down here. These are the special edition covers, which I love. Not usually one for cartoon covers, but it looks more like a sketch. There's an it just beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So long shot, block shot, and hook shot. It won't fit. Okay, that's gonna have to go down here then. Okay, I'll just put that down there. Can you? You can't even. You can't even see that, can you? And I think I'm gonna put the um the off campus series down there. We have the deal, the score. No, the mistake, and then the score. I do not have the goal or the legacy because, quite frankly, they're terrible and they don't exist to me. I only keep the books that I will probably plan to reread in the future and that I love. So put these here. Then I have the Ravenhood trilogy by Kate Stewart. And uh, do you know what? I didn't even really like this series, to be honest. Well, it's not that I didn't like it. I thought it was fine. I read it years ago. I can't really remember what happens, but I remember being incredibly underwhelmed by The Secret. And I didn't cry either, but it does take quite a lot for me to cry <laughs> in a book. But I don't really want to sell them because they, they're the indie copies. And I know that they're quite coveted. So I'm probably able to get decent money for them, but... <laughs> I just like owning something that other people want, even though I don't really want them myself. Is that, does, does that make me a terrible person? <sighs> Who cares? There are worse things to be in this world. Oh my God, I'm getting hot doing this. Then I'm going to put, <laughs> then I'm gonna put the Maid trilogy by Danielle Laurie. Say what you want about Danielle Laurie, but this is the best mafia series I've ever read. Not that I've read tons of mafia, but this is just untouchable to me, especially the second and third book. Even though I always say the first one is my favorite purely because I love Nico. I love that. The second and third book are just, they're good, aren't they? They're, they're just so good. So I'm gonna put those um, down here. I also have The Chase. This was the only book that I liked in the Briar U series, so I kept it. And then as this shelf is quite short, small, I'm gonna put maybe some contemporary romances that I've got that are quite <laughs> compact and nice. First up, I've got the Did I Mention I Love You trilogy. Love this trilogy, always the mahoot. And then I've got Abby Jimenez, Part of Your World, Before I... <laughs> Let Go by Kennedy Ryan and then You With A View. Romance books that I loved. I'm gonna put those over there. And I have Yours Truly Here by Abby Jimenez, my favorite Abby Jimenez book. That is gonna go in there. Then we have It Happened One Summer and Hook, Line and Sinker. I didn't even really like this book. I might sell that actually. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna sell that. I'm gonna put that in my sell pile because I didn't love it anywhere near as much as this one. This one was a little banger and I will definitely reread it at some point. I'm gonna put a Not So Meat Cute and So Not Meant To Be. Liked this one, loved this one. I know a lot of people don't really like this book because they find the FMC annoying and their conflict was quite petty. I completely agree with that. But oh, I loved it because I laughed so hard. You make me laugh as hard as what this book did, then you're going on the shelf. Oh, is it gonna fit? Yes. I love it when things go my way. Then I'm going to add The Simple Wild and Wild at Heart. Loved this. Oh my God, this book is just incredible. Did not like the second book. It was very boring. But the first like 20% of this, Jonah says something to Kala that is just, oh my God, it's so incredible. Lives in my head rent free. I can't remember what it is exactly because it is quite a paragraph. But I, I keep this book called That Reason Alone. So let's put this over here. Then I've got Set On You, which... I might sell. Oh, I don't. Ah! Oh God, I might sell it. I don't know. Hmm. I did really enjoy this, but am I going to reread it? I'll keep it for now. Slot it in. Swear on this life by Renee Carlino. I'm probably never going to reread this, but I bought this in Barnes and Noble, so I don't really want to get rid of it. So I think I'm going to keep it for now. I'll, I'll keep. I'll keep hold of it for now. And I've got some absolute whoppers in dark romance that need to go in the tall section. So. 
I've got Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin, Dark Notes, and then Still Beating. Then I've got Ashley Jade, The Words and The Choice, and it almost feels criminal to put these on the bottom shelf. Well, it won't quite be on the bottom, it'll be on the second one up from the bottom, because I loved both of these books, and oh, I feel like they deserve a better place than that. But I don't have anywhere. I, yeah, I don't currently have anywhere. So I'm gonna have to put those down there, and then I've also got Cruel Prince by Ashley Jade. This is the first book in the Royal Hearts Academy series. Don't own the rest of this series physically yet, because it's money, 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 honey. This isn't a contemporary romance, it's more contemporary fiction, hardback of a book that I loved last year, and that was Carrie Soto is back. I do want to buy the paperback for this because I hate hardbacks with a passion. Um, but for now, it needs to go on the shelf. The Unhoneymooners by Christine Lauren. I specifically picked up this cover in Barnes and Noble in New York because I just I love it. It is sunshine, it is summer holidays, it is giving beach. Let's go to the beach, beach. Oh, let's go get away. Better than the movies, Lynn Painter. If you know, you know. And then I've got Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. Lawrence made that up. Christina Lauren, really enjoyed this one. Uh, Pack at the Moon by Kristen Higgins. One of the saddest books I've ever read. Cried my eyes out like a baby, but also laughed in equal measure. So I don't know what to tell you. The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon, enjoyed this. And I love the cover, I can't not own this. The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I need to do a reread of this soon. Then I've got Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I didn't really like this book that much. Well, I did up until the ending. I thought the ending was just horrific, but there were parts of the writing in this that I really liked. And I don't just read for enjoyment, I read for craft because I think, oh, I like the way that they said this or they did this. And then this is another of those books that I'll never reread probably. It's my favorite book by this author. I love the cover and I know that this would make some serious dollar, well, I think if I was to put it up for sale on Vinted or somewhere. And it's Heartbones by Colleen Hoover. You can't get this cover anymore and I cannot stand the new cover of Heartbones. This one though is gorgeous. Good Girl Complex by Al Kennedy. It's not my favorite Al Kennedy by any means, but I love the way that Al Kennedy writes and I know that I would have tabbed bits of this for craft. So that is probably why I've kept it uh, for that purpose. Then I've got Karen Slaughter, Pretty Girls. I think I'm gonna sell this. Not for very much though, because the back of it is, I accidentally spilt water on it, but I'm, I'm never gonna reread this or look at it again. So that can go in my sale pile. Then I have a really old YA fantasy series that will always hold a special place in my heart and it's the Hush Hush series by oh, Becca Fitzpatrick, but I'm holding it the wrong way. Really annoying that I have two hardbacks and then the rest paperbacks. I've come a long, long way since uh, Patch. He was my OG book boyfriend. Me and a girl that I used to be friends with in sixth form, we loved this series. Like we would talk about Patch all the time. So there's a certain element of nostalgia to these books as well. So I also have Divine Rivals and Ruthless Vows, which I think I think I might sell. Even though the foil has more or less completely worn away from Divine Rivals, someone's bound to want to buy it, especially on Vinted. I love this book so, so much. So I was heartbroken with how bad I thought this book was. It was terrible. Um, there were so many plot holes. It, yeah, it was awful. I have a whole video on my channel if you want to check that out. So I'm never going to want to reread this book with how bad this book was. So maybe I will sell both of those. I'm gonna put it in my sell pile anyway. Then I also have two of the after books, after and then after we collided, but I don't know where the rest of the series is. Hmm, what have I done with those? So I'm gonna put those in the wardrobe until I find the others. Then I've got some thrillers that I really enjoyed that I wanna keep. I don't know if I'll ever reread them, but I might go back to them to reference or to recommend. So I'm gonna keep them for now, but they are Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Kavanagh. Then I've got In My Dreams I Hold A Shank. I hold a shanky shank, I hold a knife. Uh, the Defense by Steve Kavanagh and then Next of Kin by Kia Abdullah. So I'm gonna keep those and put them on the bottom shelf. And then I've got, lastly, Where the Crawdads Sing. Half of this book was really slow, did really enjoy the ending though, and just the story overall. I really like books set in the deep south. Stick me in a swamp and I'm your girl. New Orleans, anything like that, I, just, I love. And then I've got Pride and Prejudice um, by Jane Austen, and this is the Chiltern uh, edition. I got this one in Hay on White, it was rather expensive. And I've never read a classic. So I decided to purchase. Maybe I will get round to reading this one day, 
but all I know is that it's very, very pretty. Oh, and then I have one more, uh, The Dare by Harley LaRue. The less said about this book, the better, I think. So that is all of my books now put away on my two new shelves. I'm gonna have a tidy up in here, a dust down, and then I'll give you one final shot of the entire room. And what I'm gonna do is just count how many physical books I own, because I probably should have done that <laughs> as I was going through them. Okay, I want you to guess how many books you think you have seen me put away today. Have a guess, have a little think about it. If you said 50, you would have been wrong. If you said 100, you would have been wrong. But if you said 150, you also would have been wrong. <laughs> no, seriously, if you said 119, you would have been correct. I own physically 119 books. And I now have just a little bit of space for some new ones. New ones that I intend to keep. I do have an entire TBR trolley full of books, but the likelihood is, is that I won't keep all of those. So as I've said, I will tidy up this room, give you one last look-see at the finished product. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, you can like, you can comment, and if you're new, you can subscribe. But until next time, folks, I will see you later.